It lays the predicate and the foundation for the development of a weather satellite that will permit man to determine the world's cloud layer and ultimately to control the weather and he who controls the weather will control the world. Do those who currently control the levers of power actually have a handle on what they're doing, even from the standpoint of their own interest, even from the standpoint of their own self-preservation or near-term survival? No, they don't. We're not dealing with sanity. If we collectively remain on the current course, no one gets out alive. Effects of geoengineering must be urgently investigated, experts say. That new report headline is from the UK Guardian. The Guardian report then states, impact on ecosystems must be predicted before technology is used, U.S. Atmospheric Science Agency chief says. Scientists must work urgently on predicting the effects of climate geoengineering. The chief, chief of the U.S. Atmospheric Science Agency has said, as the technology is likely to be needed. Really, likely to be needed, as if those in power would ask for our permission before they committed us all to a planetary experiment from which there is no return in any time frame that matters, as if so-called solar radiation management operations aren't raging in our skies and haven't been for decades, as if weather isn't being used as a toxic covert weapon of war all over the world. Listen carefully to this very short audio that many have not yet heard from former CIA director John Brennan. Here it is. Another example is the array of technologies, often referred to collectively as geoengineering, that potentially could help reverse the warming effects of global climate change. One that has gained my personal attention is stratospheric aerosol injection, or SAI, a method of seeding the stratosphere with particles that can help reflect the sun's heat in much the same way that volcanic eruptions do. An SAI program could limit global temperature increases, reducing some risks associated with higher temperatures and providing the world economy additional time to transition from fossil fuels. This process is also relatively inexpensive. The National Research Council estimates that a fully deployed SAI program would cost about $10 billion yearly. As promising as it may be, moving forward on SAI would also raise a number of challenges for our government and for the international community. On the technical side, greenhouse gas emission reductions would still have to accompany SAI to address other climate change effects, such as ocean acidification, because SAI alone would not remove greenhouse gases from the atmosphere. On the geopolitical side, the technology's potential to alter weather patterns and benefit certain regions of the world at the expense of other regions could trigger sharp opposition by some nations. Others might seize on SAI's benefits and back away from their commitment to carbon dioxide reductions. And as with other breakthrough technologies, global norms and standards are lacking to guide the deployment and implementation of SAI. Again, that was former director of the CIA, John Brennan. A question for Mr. Brennan. Climate engineering wouldn't be expensive? Really? Fleets of hundreds to even thousands of jets filling our skies with the toxic brew of climate engineering elements day in and day out wouldn't be expensive. And whatever the cost, it pales in comparison to the cost of consequences of this weather warfare, contamination of the entire planet, completely disrupting the global hydrological cycle and destroying Earth's essential life-sustaining ozone layer without which all terrestrial life and most aquatic life will perish. On that note, next, please listen carefully to this short audio clip of an exchange I had with a former NASA contract engineer that is metering ozone depletion and surface UV radiation for geoengineeringwatch.org with state-of-the-art equipment supplied by geoengineeringwatch.org. And while listening, consider that the single greatest source of ozone layer damage is climate engineering atmospheric aerosol dispersions and RF microwave transmissions that manipulate the particulates. Here it is. Based on everything we know, again, conservatively, would you estimate that we have less than a decade? And that's, I think that's very conservative. And that doesn't mean business as usual until then. It means that we are on a downhill free fall until that point. But within a decade, if we remain in the current course, uh, life on planet Earth in most, if not always, may be over. 
That's a very conservative estimate, Dane. Um, I'm beginning to wonder if 2025 is realistic. Things are just happening too fast. On that note, and what you just stated, happening too fast, and Einstein stated this, one of the folly of, a major folly of mankind is their inability to understand the exponential equation. And that is a key part of this that just doesn't fit into people's reality. Is that not true? That they, that this equation is so unimaginably non-linear that people simply can't comprehend the exponential factor of how fast the Earth's life support systems are disintegrating. Exactly. Uh, you experienced a, a situation with the frogs. And that situation happened because there was an a hole in the ozone that passed over that area. Yeah, they were, for those listeners that didn't see that video, it's an Into the Wild video on geoengineeringwatch.org. Saw a very anomalous uh, bullfrog hatch, literally thousands of bullfrogs in a place they didn't, they weren't normally at. And I monitored those frogs, and over the course of the coming two weeks, the, 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 the sunlight was so intense, they were literally frying on the mud only feet from the water, and that's all on film on the record at geoengineeringwatch.org. And could there have been other factors involved in that equation? Possibly, but nothing that would do that as far as water contamination or any other source of, of uh, potentially lethal impact on those frogs. The only factor that there's any validity to or verifiable information on would be the intense UV radiation, which was occurring during that time, and they were literally frying on the beach where they would normally be able to sit, or on, not, not on the beach, on a little mud flat, where they would have normally been able to sit all day, and they were literally cooking in their tracks. Exactly. Um, and, and the sad part is, we've created so many ozone holes over the years, starting with the, with the nuclear tests that took place. Those could make ozone holes a thousand miles wide. And it takes time for the ozone to recombine at altitude. Um, and people you, don't realize that uh, any rocket launch does it tear, literally tears a hole in the ozone layer as well, correct? Exactly. The, the space shuttle, uh, all of the launches, uh, depending on the size of the rockets like the Saturn V, uh, that makes an immediate 10 mile wide hole in the ozone layer on, on its initial launch. And, and if, you can, if you can imagine it, it's like uh, you're going through, you, you remember those old oil lamps, the, the, they called them lava lamps. If you could imagine an oil surface just turning it on and then being penetrated from below um, and making a hole in that top and then having the hole expand, okay, as it, as it continues to destroy the ozone layer. The, it's a it's kind of a cheap analogy, but I'm, I'm trying to give you a visualization over what happens when you disturb the air like that. Uh, it's like a fan effect. Once you start the fan up, it continues to expand. Um, atmospheric physics is the most single complex issue in, in, in physics and particle physics that exists. China made the fastest computer in the world to study climate engineering. Um, and it, it's 150 petaflops and phenomenally fast. But that computer still can't do it. And even with all that in mind, what we have in essence right now is the global climate engineering cabal utilizing the atmosphere for testing all of these processes, they're using the atmosphere for a giant physics lab with unknown consequences. Is that a yeah. correct assessment? Exactly. It's like listening to Lyndon Johnson over and over and over. I mean, when, when, when do these people catch on that what they're talking about is total global destruction? When do they catch on to that? And I, there's no place to hide. There isn't any place to hide. In regard to the ozone layer, it's important for people to understand that that is not a uniform depletion, as you just tried to describe. There, it waxes and wanes, and it is, again, not uniform. So it depends on where you're at, where the particular uh, depletion elements may be, or what other factors, wind currents, um, cloud cover. 
but it is not a uniform depletion. But overall, we are losing it rapidly. And with without the ozone layer, it's game over on planet Earth. Ray, in summary, what would your warning be to humanity based on all the research you have done? And what would your message be to the climate engineers? There's only one answer to that, Dane. Stop all geoengineering. I'll stop there. So to reiterate, even if we had no other converging threats, though there are countless others, the rapid deterioration of Earth's ozone layer is by itself an extremely near-term existential threat. The ongoing climate intervention operations are the single largest core factor to this destruction. Question, what will collapse of everything, everywhere, all at once look like? Collapse comes the moment there isn't enough to go around, not enough to eat, to drink, to shelter with. With those conditions come the end of what was. Here's the latest Harbinger example from the New York Post. Haiti collapse will spark another border crisis, they say, and we're not ready. First, Haiti is only the most recent addition to the list of collapsing countries around the world, over three dozen and counting. And next, about the not ready part, that's a monumental understatement. What's happening in Haiti isn't some passing turmoil, it's collapse, permanent collapse, and this is just the latest example. Are the dominoing list of failed states just the result of bad governments and bad economic policies? No. The bottom line foundational factor fueling unfolding failed states is biosphere collapse, including crops and fisheries, aka food. Our collective Mad Max future isn't somewhere over the horizon in the distant future. It's here, already unfolding in so many countries. And above it all, the so-called solar radiation management operations continue to rage. The single most destructive human activity ever deployed by the human race, the greatest and most immediate threat we collectively face, short of nuclear cataclysm. Ecosystems all over the world are imploding, not just from acknowledged industrialized militarized activity. Climate engineering is core to this equation. In first world countries where there's still food on the shelves, beer, sports games, and a constant streaming of scripted political theater, the delusion of endless expansion and consumption on a finite planet with finite resources continues for the moment. Back to Haiti and what's coming to a neighborhood near you. Far sooner than almost any yet dare to consider. From the nation.com, will the Haitian crisis lead to yet another military intervention? Question mark. That report says, with gangs holding the country hostage and violence spinning out of control, the U.S. and the U.N. play pass the parcel. Yes, pass the parcel, a.k.a. how will the manipulators of the Matrix use Haiti's collapse, which they have both helped to create, in order to take total control of the landmass, in order to extract any remaining resources that the empires seek, like pirates trying to fill their pockets with gold on the deck of a sinking ship, a.k.a. planet Earth. On that note, from the Washington Post, this headline, quote, The history of foreign intervention in Haiti is ugly. Yes, indeed it is. From the UK Daily Mail, Haiti will go hungry soon as looting sparks food shortage crisis and society plunges into chaos, with experts warning the country is falling apart as, quote, barbecue gang leader, that's his name, thugs take control. The report continues, Haiti's main port was forced to close days after thousands of inmates were broken out of two prisons, swelling the ranks of gangs already enforcing their control over much of the nation, including the capital city. Gangs have burned police stations, shot up the main international airport, which remains closed, and again raided Haiti's two biggest prisons, freeing more than 4,000 inmates. In many cases, the gangs are better armed than the police. The people with the guns are essentially the current arbiter of Haitian politics. Now let's rewind to this report from last year from AP News. UN report, modern weapons being smuggled to Haiti from US, no surprise. The report states United Nations increasingly sophisticated weapons are being trafficked into Haiti, mainly from the United States and especially from Florida, amid worsening lawlessness in the impoverished Caribbean nation, according to a UN report. Here's the bottom line. Everywhere there is chaos, carnage, and collapse, the U.S. is supplying weapons. What a surprise. Business as usual. Which military has by far carried out the most interventions in the most countries and currently has the most bases on foreign soil all over the world? Almost 800 bases. 
Yes, the so-called land of the free and home of the brave. To those that are still trying to convince themselves that it was all about so-called freedom and democracy, think again. It's about securing resources and control for empire on a now rapidly dying planet. On that upbeat note, this is Dane Wigington. You're listening to the weekly installment of the Commercial Free Non-Political Global Alert News Report. This is the end of the world as we know it broadcast. Brought to you by geoengineeringwatch.org, the largest and most visited website in the world on the subject of global climate engineering operations, a.k.a. weather warfare. Reaching a critical mass of awareness is the only way forward in this fight. We can, we must reach a critical mass by starting a conversation on climate engineering that leads people to a credible source of data. Geoengineeringwatch.org will continue all of our efforts to be the go-to source on covert climate engineering operations. Again, if we can fully expose weather warfare, so many other truths would be forced to the full light of day with it. About the wider horizon from Bloomberg.com, is the world close to collapse? Question mark. The Bloomberg report then states, scholars hear whirring historical echoes in the stresses building up in the U.S. and the global shocks of war, migration, climate, disease, and famine. Yes, the total collapse of everything, everywhere, all at once. The light at the end of the tunnel is the oncoming train. Those at the top, those who control it all, who control the printing of money, thus everything else, know this is coming. How could they not? They've done everything to facilitate it all, along with a majority population that is unfortunately all too willing to give their active or passive consent, so long as their personal paradigm isn't disturbed. Good luck with keeping that going. The carbon fuel carnival is over. Question, if the predator parasite class actually knew what they were doing in regard to their own preservation, why would they continue with business as usual to the point that no one will make it through what's coming? Because power is an addiction, and the addicts, aka the clinically insane, are not about to give it up. Even if that means taking down the human race and the entire web of life with them, and about business as usual until the moment of impact, which is one of the core objectives of the climate engineers. Chemical ice nucleation cloud seeding operations creating temporary toxic surface cooldowns, aka engineered winter weather, followed by highly sensationalized matrix media headlines, which unfortunately convince a large segment of populations that the planet couldn't be superheating when in actuality it's descending into total meltdown with climate engineering further fueling the overall fire. On that note from CBS News, snowstorm continues to pound Colorado. Second wave of moisture reaches Denver. And this from theweatherchannel.com, winter storm hammers Colorado front range, including Denver. Also from the Weather Channel, climate engineering cover-up source, Colorado snowstorm creates travel chaos west of Denver. And lastly, this from KDVR.com. Why some Colorado areas got no snow during biggest snowstorm in three years. This is all the same event they're talking about here. And this is exactly the kind of sensationalized event that I referred to a moment ago while much of the planet is in total meltdown. This report, the last one I cited, continues. For example, the National Weather Service reported just over an inch of accumulation at the Denver International Airport. Meanwhile, just a few miles away, In Aurora, the National Weather Service report totals range from 8 inches to nearly 14 inches. Let's stop there for some summary evaluation. So many times on so many broadcasts, I've made mention of this exact scenario. Chemically nucleated frozen material being stacked up in a few select locations to facilitate the sensationalized headlines mentioned earlier. And walking distance away, literally, there may be no snow, a.k.a. chemically ice nucleated material. This is on the so-called warm side of the so-called winter storms. The latest sensationalized event has been named Winter Storm Quadir, Q-A-D-I-R, and Denver is again the bullseye, as has been the case for late season events for many years. Denver sits in a high elevation basin, which traps the chemical ice nucleation cloud seeding cooled air mass that descends to the surface as cold air is dense. Remember and consider the open air freezer in your food market. Everything is frozen in it due to the reasons I just cited. The cold, dense air stays in the basin. Back to Denver and the sensationalized headlines of frozen material that all too often begins falling at far above freezing temperatures. And for the record, 
The now constant extreme hail events are also a direct result of chemical ice nucleation cloud seeding operations, which are patented processes. Again, please search the engineering winter section. Look at all the images contained in the various reports in that section. You'll be shocked to the marrow. From GBNews.com, that considers themselves to be Britain's news source, this sensationalized report, quote, U.S. snow forecast, winter storm caught here to bring heaviest snow for three years to America. They say a major winter storm threatens the heaviest snow in three years as parts of the U.S. brace for a three-day polar deluge. Sensationalization everywhere in this. The U.S. National Weather Service has, quote, extreme severity warnings in force for up to four feet of snow in Colorado, Wyoming, Utah, and Montana ahead of winter storm cut here. There you have it sensationalized headlines. It doesn't matter if it isn't exactly accurate. Certainly this engineered winter event in Colorado wasn't the quote heaviest snow for three years in the U.S., but many won't connect the dots. They just remember the headlines and convince themselves that the planet can't possibly be warming with all that frozen material, even if it's only in targeted regions. And keep this in mind, the storm scenario just outlined, so-called winter storm caught here, was fueled with moisture again from the record warm Gulf of Mexico. Moisture that was moving from east to west in Colorado. This is historically backwards for a so-called winter storm. Welcome to engineered earth. On the subject of whistleblowers from BBC, this Boeing whistleblower, John Barnett, found dead in U.S. Reports as a former Boeing employee known for raising concerns about the firm's production standards has been found dead in the U.S. In the days before his death, he had been giving evidence in a whistleblower lawsuit against the company. He had been due to undergo further questioning on Saturday when he did not appear. Inquiries were made at his hotel. He was subsequently found dead in his truck in the hotel parking lot. The 62-year-old had died, they say, from a self-inflicted wound. Police are investigating. Here's a question. Was this whistleblower going to disclose more than we're being told about the aircraft industry? How will we ever know at this point? And about the climate insuring cover-up and damage control, now let's look at this. New from CNN, the truth behind those white streaks trailing behind jets in the sky. New this week. The report says, what is the chemtrails conspiracy theory? Question mark. They then say the chemtrails idea has been around since 1996 and is largely rooted in an Air Force research paper from the same year, weather as a force multiplier, owning the weather in 2025. They then say it outlines a, quote, future weather modification system to achieve military objectives using aerospace forces and does not reflect, they say, current military policy practice or capability. That's according to the Environmental Protection Agency. Do they make it up as they go? Yes. To claim that the increasing awareness of our science fiction skies is just due to a 1996 USAF research paper is complete deception. And then the CNN's reassurance that the U.S. EPA said it isn't so. And that statement from the EPA, the Environmental Plunder Agency, is supposed to set us all to rest? No, it won't. It doesn't. Impact at full velocity is coming at blinding speed. Climate engineering operations are the biggest foot on the gas pedal at this moment in time. But the cover-up continues. New from AccuWeather, quote, Kim trails are one of the most popular conspiracy theories. Here's what it means. You can imagine what that article states, just more of the same. It's a rehash of the CNN article, which was authored, by the way, by one Leah S. Malash, A-S-M-E-L-A-S-H. You can look the article up and see for yourself. And would a link to the Geoengineering Watch documentary, The Dimming, cause Miss S. Malash to actually investigate before pinning what amounts to an international climate engineering cover-up piece? Or is her paycheck and pension, the bottom line in this equation, as it is with so many others. Sending a link to the dimming to all meteorological personnel and authors of environmental articles or certainly disinformation pieces like this designed to completely deceive the public as to what's actually happening in our skies, to marginalize anyone who dares to point it out and thus recruit the rest of the herd to knee-jerk respond with their conspiracy theory programmed reply. On that note, 
recently from the UK Independent, this headline, Conspiracy Theories About Geoengineering Are Harming Research, Scientists Claim. Yes, the so-called scientists, the so-called experts, and these terms that really no longer have any validity, do they? How bad is it? How bad will it get and how soon? Let's start here from Reuters.com. EU must prepare for, quote, catastrophic climate change risks, agency says. From that report, countries across Europe should prepare for catastrophic risks ranging from floods to deadly heat waves as worsening climate change hits every part of their economies and societies this century. It's happening now. It's not somewhere over the horizon. The EU Environmental Agency said this on Monday, by the way. Let's keep going from UNnews.org. Earth's life support system is being destroyed by global business paradigm. That's a statement from UN expert. The report continues, the colossal impacts on natural resources which are being consumed six times faster than the planet can sustain. The situation is further exacerbated as states often encourage, enable, and subsidize destructive business activities. The UN News report continues with this, among them are so-called greenwashing, the undermining of scientific fact, enabling corruption, and the use of lawsuits to silence, debate, and intimidate critics. And, of course, also using matrix media to program populations into marginalizing their own, if anyone dares to acknowledge the shockingly visible science fiction skies. Final excerpt from this report. Paradoxically, businesses have a critical role in supporting society's quest for a just and sustainable future. Therefore, they say we need to promote good practices and require all businesses to shift to a paradigm that puts people and the planet before profit, end quote. Really, does anyone that's even slightly awake and aware actually believe that the manipulators of the matrix and their countless volunteers are going to, quote, promote good practices and shift to a paradigm that puts people and the planet before profit? Santa Claus, the Tooth Fairy, and the Easter Bunny, all far easier to believe in than the notion of what I just mentioned. No, they're not going to stop unless or until fully awakened populations realize and accept that they are fighting for their lives and their children's lives. Unless or until that same population sets out to identify all those that are participating either actively or passively, which includes elected officials, media, material suppliers, and more, and holds each of them, all of them, legally and morally accountable for their actions. Such an effort will take all of us. It cannot be carried out by the few on behalf of the many. And there's this footnote. Alarmingly, there are those who claim to be truth tellers and who claim to be in the fight to stop climate engineering while simultaneously denying it. How exactly does that help the cause? Answer, it doesn't. From earth.org, best places to live to avoid, quote, climate change. They say experts have found climate change, aka abrupt climate collapse, disproportionately impacting marginalized and minority communities, many of whom are forced to flee their homes in a growing phenomenon known as climate migration. While it is critical that the world works together to drastically and rapidly cut down greenhouse gas emissions and invest in climate mitigation and adaptation, they say it is understandable for individuals, at least those with the resources and the means, to consider relocating to the best places to live to avoid climate change, again, a.k.a. abrupt climate collapse, being further fueled by climate intervention operations. Summary. So many of those that are labeled as migrants are ecological collapse refugees, a condition that comes in countless forms, and I'm not stating any opinion on any border policy. I'm simply stating an increasingly obvious fact. When people can no longer survive where they are, they'll do whatever it takes to find a place where they can. About the earth.org's mention of adapting, good luck with that. About their suggestion that those with enough cash should relocate, again, how much good will that ultimately do when the entire ship is going down? Again, just like passengers that decide to move to the front of a ship that temporarily rises out of the water because the back half is going under the water. What cards might the controllers play as they increasingly lose their grip on populations? Consider this from the express.com avian flu scientists warn quote apocalyptic disease could jump to humans. This is an ongoing push to program populations into certain conclusions. The report says researchers fear that having jumped from birds to mammals, the virus may now be moving from one mammal to another. Question, does that sound eerily like a rerun to anyone? 
Are they paving the way and conditioning populations for the next round? Is there any valid reason we should think that they wouldn't do this? You decide. What other cards can we and should we expect the matrix manipulators to play as all spirals out of control? Global conflict is their whole card, and they have done oh so much to get the wheels turning in that arena. New from Reuters.com, Russia, Iran, and China to hold warship drills in the Gulf of Oman. Quite a recipe for global omnicide. Nuclear conflict on top of ecological and societal collapse, which will trigger another 442 nuclear power plants to melt down. A question, is the road we are collectively on actually this dark? Yes. And there's this question to consider. What biosphere factors are further forcing total desperation on the part of the controllers? Here's an example from PBS. Was this really a one in seven billion year event? Question mark, exclamation point. The PBS report then states, for decades, Antarctic sea ice trends seemed to defy climate change until they didn't. In just two years, Antarctica lost as much sea ice as the Arctic lost in three decades. Statistics say that the record low sea ice in 2023 in Antarctica was a one in seven billion year event, suggesting that the models in this case may be broken or that this anomaly was caused by, quote, climate change. Again, abrupt climate collapse, the climate engineering factor, of course, not mentioned. They never will. And let's stop there. This isn't an anomaly. This year will be worse than 2023, and it isn't, quote, just climate change. The earth changes that are currently unfolding are scientifically termed an abrupt climate collapse scenario, and finally, there's no legitimate discussion of climate anything from any perspective without first and foremost addressing the climate engineering issue. There's no arguing that point, not rationally. The true extent of Antarctic sea ice and the Arctic as well has been hidden from public understanding for decades. Even the so-called climate science community has kept their heads in the sand in regard to the decades of sea surface chemical ice nucleation operations that have been conducted in the polar regions. And no, I'm not speculating. The results can be seen from satellite imagery. And again, just like the constant engineered winter weather events in so many other regions, the temporary and toxic surface cool downs come at the cost of an even worse overall long-term warming. Thus, the startling mathematical statistics cited by PBS in regard to the abrupt crash of Antarctic sea ice. To see satellite images of sea surface nucleation, search and view the following geoengineering watch or report titled, What are the climate engineers doing in the Arctic, astounding images and dead scientists. Welcome to engineered earth. The proverbial chickens are now coming home to roost and still the smoke and mirror denial persists. From AfricanBusiness.com, this, Africa helps to shoot down solar geoengineering proposal at UN Environmental Assembly. Supporters of solar geoengineering believe it could play a role in slowing down climate change. How's that going so far? Critics have warned, however, that a range of catastrophic impacts could, could, may, might emerge. Really? Catastrophic impacts like everything that's already occurring all over the world? The AfricaBusiness.com report continues. This eventually caused the Swiss delegation to withdraw their resolution on the last day of the conference, thus leaving the 2010 moratorium on geoengineering untouched for now. And for the record, the so-called moratorium on geoengineering means exactly nothing. No one cares about that kind of provision. They do whatever they want in our skies because no one has so far been willing to stand up and stop them. This is why we must reach a critical mass of awareness. It is the only way forward in this fight. The report continues with this. Several countries, including the United States, supported the African position in Nairobi, but skeptics suspect that the U.S. opposition stemmed from not wanting the U.N. environmental program to take charge of governance of geoengineering rather than because of concern over geoengineering itself. Why would they be concerned? This is their crown jewel weapon they've been utilizing for over 75 years. Yes, by all means, let's keep pretending climate engineering isn't raging in our skies, wreaking havoc on the planet's life support systems, which includes destroying the ozone layer, as covered earlier, while simultaneously contaminating the entire planet and every breath we take. And about such consequences, from Reuters.com, this African 
cocoa plants run out of beans as global chocolate crisis deepens. The report says chocolate makers have already increased prices to consumers after three years of poor cocoa harvest, with a fourth expected in the two countries that produce 60% of the world's cocoa. This is just the beginning. Enjoy it while you can. From the Atlantic.com, fruit chaos is coming. The report says from the author, Summer to me is about stone fruit, dark purple plums, peaches you can smell from three feet away. But last summer, I struggled to find peaches at the farmer's market in New York City. A freak deep freeze in February had taken them out across New York State and other parts of the Northeast. Buds shriveling on the branch as temperatures plummeted below zero and a brutally cold dry wind swept through the region. Report continues. The loss was severe. One farmer estimated that the Hudson Valley had lost 90% of its stone fruit. Connecticut reportedly lost 50 to 75 percent of their fruit. Another freeze in the second half of May damaged lots of other crops, including strawberries and blueberries in New Hampshire. Apple growers who went to bed with orchards full of pink blossoms awoke to petals turning brown. In Georgia, the iconic peach state, they lost some 90 percent of last year's crop. A Georgia summer without peaches, an unfathomable thing. An unusually warm winter robbed the trees of the period of cold, the dormancy period they need to bloom in the spring. The buds that did emerge were like the ones in the Northeast, killed by a cold snap in the early spring. Fruit trees evolved, the report says, to live in a more stable condition. They're exquisitely well adapted to the rhythm of a usual year, but instead of reliable seasons, they're getting weather chaos. Weather chaos. That's exactly what's occurring. I've spoken many times of the scenarios just described. Ever warmer winters capped by a chemical ice nucleation cloud sitting cold snap late in the season to achieve maximum crop damage. Control the weather, control the food supply, control the people, control the world until there's nothing left. You're listening to the weekly installment of Global Alert News, the Bad News Broadcast, installment number 449, March 16th, 2024. This is Dane Wigington, your host. Global Alert News is brought to you by geoengineeringwatch.org, the largest and most visited website in the world on the subject of climate intervention operations known as geoengineering. The commercial-free, non-political Global Alert News Hour is broadcast on stations throughout the U.S., Recordings of this broadcast can be found on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org under the recent column and on the Dane Wigington YouTube channel. Geoengineering Watch wishes to express our deepest gratitude to those that have helped us to expand our reach and thus our voice in this desperate last hour effort to sound the alarm. On that subject, if you're on our email list, please put us on your email contact book so that our mail outs don't go to the spam files. Please help us to share the groundbreaking documentary, The Dimming, which fully exposes the climate engineering atrocities. Now at... Approaching 6.3 million views. The best way to share is by circulating the direct link to the dimming by email directly from the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org. Sharing directly helps us to overcome social media censorship. When viewing our YouTube of the dimming or Global Alert News or any other Geoengineering Watch video on YouTube, please subscribe, share, and comment all of which helps us to circulate critically important data to a much wider audience. About reaching those who still aren't looking up, here's one way. By starting the conversation with Geoengineering Watch awareness raising materials which can be found on our homepage, our only goal is to provide activists what they need to move this fight forward. We have extremely high quality printed materials with shocking images, a picture is worth a thousand words as the proverb goes. And we pass on these printed materials for less than our overall cost of producing, packing, and shipping. We only want to get them in circulation. We have Geoengineering Watch hoodies, Geoengineering Watch shirts. Photos of both are on our homepage. We have scannable business cards, bumper stickers, all effective tools to help strike up a conversation on the climate engineering issue. Again, reaching a critical mass of awareness on the climate engineering onslaught is the great imperative of our time. If we can expose it, we can stop it from the inside out. If you're willing to share a picture of yourself with a Geoengineering Watch shirt or hoodie, perhaps at a local mall or somewhere busy, please send your photo to us so that we can post it as part of our activist compilation, which is now part of our materials page. The images encourage others to make their voices heard in this all-important battle to sound the alarm. And as always, my deepest gratitude to those that have steadfastly committed themselves to this must-win fight for all that matters. My deepest, deepest regard to you. It is our collective efforts that can still make a difference. 
Moving on, ocean temperatures are the bottom line regarding the planet's energy balance, or more correctly, the rapidly worsening lack of it. New from SciTechDaily.com. North Atlantic temperatures smash 40-year records. It's not just 40-year records. That's just how long they've been keeping records in specific regions. They say this is a sign of a climate emergency, question mark. Observations of unprecedented ocean temperatures in 2023 may become typical in a world that is 5.4 degree Fahrenheit, that's 3 degrees C, warmer than pre-industrial levels, according to a new study. They say analysis of climate model projections showed that last year's extreme ocean conditions were similar to what scientists expected to be the average if global warming reaches 5.4 F or 3 degrees C of warming. But currently, they say global temperatures have risen only about 1.2 degrees C of warming above pre-industrial levels. So there it is. Read between the lines. Vindication for what geoengineeringwatch.org has stated on the record for a decade and a half. In this report, they admit that the ocean warming is so extreme, it is indicative of a planet that has already warmed well over 3 degrees C. Unfortunately, it's actually worse than that. A fact that will soon enough be impossible to hide, no matter how many temporary toxic chemical ice nucleation surface cooldowns the climate engineers carry out. From the Atlantic.com, this, the oceans we knew are already gone. From that report, as far as humanity is concerned, the transformation of our seas is effectively permanent. The report continues with this. Even after nearly three months of winter, the oceans of the northern hemisphere are disturbingly warm. What we used to consider extreme is no longer an extreme today. The situation is expected to worsen, they say. They continue with this, a 2019 IPCC report, that's the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, largest scientific panel ever created on any subject in human history. On the future of the oceans, predicted that if high emissions continued, the AMOC current would collapse by 2300, 2300 into the century. A more recent study, they then say, suggests that the AMOC could fall off a cliff much sooner. That's the best they can do? Just quote, much sooner? Let's clarify what the latest predictions of an AMOC ocean current collapse are. 2025. Yes, that's just a bit sooner, isn't it? About three quarters of a century sooner, exactly as geoengineeringwatch.org has stated on the record for 15 years. It's not as bad as we're being told. It's exponentially worse. If we knew this, how could the entirety of the so-called climate science community not know it and now only being forced to admit it because they can't hide it any longer? And about the meltdown of polar regions, this follow-up report from the postgazette.com, an unexpected climate change problem keeping nuclear waste safe. Unexpected? What did they think would happen? They certainly knew. Someone at the top, those at the top knew. Reports as one of global warming's more colorful dangers, colorful, is the possibility that melting permafrost will revive prehistoric diseases and trigger horrific pandemics. But, they say, the more immediate candidates for a disastrous climate fuel comeback are newer and man-made. A hotter and more chaotic atmosphere is making it harder to build nuclear weapons and store waste safely in an unhappy union of two of humanity's biggest headaches. There's little evidence we're prepared for what could come next. What a gross understatement that is. So, there you have it. Blame all the new improved pathogens on nature, and not the 400 plus level 4 biolabs all over the world, but the nuclear contamination catastrophes, that one's tough to blame on nature, isn't it? So there we have an admission. More meltdown, more climate intervention consequences or objectives, you decide. From the New York Times, rains are scarce in the Amazon. Instead, Megafires are raging. Reports as hundreds of square miles of the rainforest have burned as countries in the region battle a record number of fires. This is an ongoing story, by the way, as many know already. Many don't know. Extreme weather, they admit, is fueling the fires. Report continues, by this time of year, rain should be drenching large swaths of the Amazon rainforest. Instead, a punishing drought has kept the rains at bay, creating dry conditions for fires that have engulfed hundreds of square miles of the rainforest that do not usually burn. The fires have turned the end of the dry season in the northern part of the giant rainforest into a crisis. Firefighters have struggled to contain enormous blazes that have sent choking smoke into cities across South America. A record number of fires so far this year in the Amazon has also raised questions about what may be in store for the world's biggest tropical rainforest when the dry season starts in June in the far larger southern part of the jungle. This is the planet's life support systems going up in flames, literally. And we're watching political theater on Matrix Media, every single channel of 
Matrix Media, all the same coverage of the same overall meaningless events. New from phys.org, world resource extraction could surge 60% by 2060, UN warns. Enormous expansion of infrastructure, energy demand, and consumer consumption over the last half century, particularly in wealthier countries, has driven a tripling of the world's use of materials, according to the 2024 Global Resource Outlook by the UN Environmental Programs International Resource Panel. No need to worry about any of that. We will never, ever make 2060, 2050, 2040, or likely 2030. Many factors are already far past the breaking point. Links in the chain of our current reality could begin to snap on any given day at this point, and we don't know what cards the power structure will play at that point. While climate engineering is blocking the sun from solar panels, reducing wind from wind turbines, and greatly reducing hydropower, we have headlines of Joe Biden to the rescue. From Politico.com, Biden's climate chief says clean energy spending is winning over Americans. The report then states, the president's top climate advisor says Biden's policies are kicking off a job-creating economic transformation that will tackle the fundamental causes of climate change. Good luck with that, and we'll all live happily ever after. And if you think Trump is going to bring anything better, think again. All puppets in the play, nothing more, designed for mass distraction, and they both work very well for that, don't they? From CGT in Africa, WHO World Health Organization chief links climate change to global increases in health problems. You think, what could go wrong with putting 40 to 60 million tons of toxic nanoparticles into the sky every single year and then nuking them with radio frequency microwave transmissions? What could possibly go wrong? They say air pollution drives lung cancer, asthma, and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. What a surprise. But wait. Here's more fantasy fixes from the so-called experts, the so-called climate science community from the UK Guardian. Playing thriving reef sounds on underwater speakers could save damaged corals, they say. They continue, coral larvae more likely to settle on degraded reefs bathed in marine soundscapes. That's from a Caribbean study. Yes, that'll fix everything. Just put speakers on the fried and dead reefs, say the so-called scientists. And here's more of the so-called fixes that they put forth. Tarping the North and South Poles and the rest of the ice that isn't already melted. There's no limit to the idiocy being proposed by the so-called experts. And here's even more. Space mirrors to block the sun. Brazil-sized balloons in space also to block the sun. 10 million wind-powered water pumps in the Arctic to pump cold seawater to the surface, which will then allow warm water to hit the seabed, which will then cause methane hydrate deposits to thaw and release, enter the atmosphere, And we have Venus Syndrome. How much will that help? 10 million wind-powered water pumps? And this, putting vast undersea curtains below sea ice to restrict warm water from melting them faster. And there's, of course, the seawalls, undersea seawalls to hold up the glaciers. We live in a planetary asylum in which we're taught, trained, and programmed to blindly believe in the clinically insane. I'm almost out of time in this broadcast, but let's consider this from climatecodered.org. Is scientific... Reticence, the new climate denialism, question mark. The report says experts tend to establish a pure world view which becomes ever more rigid and focused, yet the crucial insights regarding the issue in question may lurk at the fringes, as the report suggests. This is particularly true when the issue is the very survival of our civilization, where conventional means of analysis may become useless. Yes, that's an understatement. It is very, very useless. It has been said that Occupiers of the throne do not heed the cries of the persecuted. And what about those that have no voice? Consider this from AccuWeather.com. Fans worry as bald eagle pair Jackie and Shadow's eggs fail to hatch. From that report, wildlife watchers keep tabs on bald eagle couple Jackie and Shadow and are worried about their three eggs, the first of which should have hatched by now but hasn't. I think this is in Big Bear, California. The film footage of these magnificent creatures was truly heart-wrenching as they attempted to save their young. Is it really any wonder why they couldn't? These poor eagles trying desperately to keep their eggs warm in a nest covered with extremely cold-to-the-touch chemical ice-nucleated frozen material that tends to stick to feathers, hides, and faces of animals that has repeatedly been responsible for the deaths of countless forms of livestock and wildlife? Please, please search the engineering winter section to learn what most don't want to know. Man's war against nature, as I have said so many times, is a war against ourselves. 
How much more clear can that be at this point? If we're to collectively make a difference at this late hour, it will take all of us. Achieving a critical mass of awareness amongst the global populations and military personnel is the only way forward in this fight. If we can fully expose the climate engineering weather warfare operations, we have a chance of stopping the atmospheric assault. If we can do that, we could at least buy time, and that's worth fighting for. Short of this, not only are the planet's last remaining life support systems being decimated by the day, but with these same aerosol spraying operations, the controllers can, at any moment of their choosing, disperse elements that are much more lethal than what is already being sprayed into our skies. If they do this, they could level the playing field. Game over for the majority of populations. Such insanity could be carried out over the course of a single day. Why in the world would we think they wouldn't? And while pondering that, Consider this, a reminder of the words spoken by former U.S. presidential advisor Zygmunt Brzezinski, quote, with today's technologies, it is easier to kill a million people than to control them, end quote. Yes, what we face is absolutely that grave. Unfolding and accelerating biosphere collapse is forcing the hand of the controllers. They will likely play much bigger cards soon. Wait and see. So what do we do? First, no fear. Only focus only a sense of unshakable purpose. We must constantly remember and consider the post at which our maker has placed us. It is our individual responsibility, our only responsibility to do our best, to do what is right, because it is right, in the time we have been given. Forward into the storm. See the activist suggestions link on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org for specific details on how you can help to move this fight forward. Never underestimate the difference a single soul can make in this all-important battle. We're not alone in this fight. As I stated on the epilogue of the Dimming documentary, any one of us could be the final pebble that triggers the landslide of awakening. We must never give up. Ever. We are the ones we have been waiting for. Until next week, this is Dane Wigington with geoengineeringwatch.org.